Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Bay City Players as we present another original comedy. My name is John Tanner, I'm, and I'm glad you uh, joined us tonight for our 12th online performance. Uh, last week, we brought you four short uh, original plays by various playwrights. Tonight's comedy uh, is it's a great show, and the title of the comedy is The Cupcake Conspiracy. Uh, written by C.J. Ehrlich and Philip Kaplan, both of them from New York, and they both happen to be with us tonight. A little bit uh, later, we'll introduce you to them. Um, we, as usual, we'd like to say that the Bay City Players is really excited to participate in the Make Art Virtual campaign started by our friends over at the Midland Center for the Arts. Uh, we would also like to thank our uh, season sponsors, Chemical Bank, Independent Bank, Landolf Packaging Systems, Skrupski's Family Funeral Home and Cremation Services, Wildfire Credit Union, and Michigan Sugar. Uh, Bay City Players is dedicated uh, to providing high quality theatrical experiences for the entertainment and the education and enrichment for all of the community. So as you know, the show must go on. It just is going on virtually. The um, if you are enjoying the performances, our virtual performances uh, that we've been bringing to you, would you please consider donating to the Bay City Players by going to our website and click on the donate button. Now, uh, I mentioned that the playwrights are with us tonight. And I'd like you to, inter to introduce them to you. Uh, first of all, CJ Ehrlich, are you there, CJ? Can you wave? I am. Thank you for being with us. And Philip Kaplan. Too. There. Thank you both for being with us tonight. Um, with our doors closed, as you know, we are very grateful to be using this platform to connect with each other. So feel free to make comments uh, as the show goes on to let us know what you think. Our cast, as usual, we say this every week, uh, they come with very little rehearsal time and without access to the theater uh, that we have no props. So all of the props we have, the actors find themselves and use whatever they have from their own home and believe me some of those props uh, are very very interesting uh, and if you are interested in participating by the way in future programs such as this one uh, please send us a message on our Facebook page or message MJ Wisniewski personally and we'll just add you to the list uh, we also what, what else do I have to say oh I think now it's time that we introduce you to the cast. Uh, when I call your name, give a wave to the audience and let them know your character's name and where you're from. Uh, Jeffrey Merriman. Hi, I'm Jeff. Uh, I play uh, Max. I am from Houston, Texas. Natalie Lynn Slonick. Hi, I'm Natalie. I'm playing Natasha and I'm from Midland, Michigan. Andy Harrington. Andy Harrington from Midland, Michigan as well, and I'll be playing Alvin. Kathy Stewart. Hi, um, I'm Kathy Stewart. I'm from Midland, Michigan, and I'll be playing uh, Susie. Jim Stewart. Hi, I'm Jim. Um, I'm also from Midland, and I play, well, two or three characters. Actor number one, I think they call me. Alan Greenberg. Good evening, everyone. I'm calling in from uh, the beautiful suburbs of Chicago, but formerly from uh, Midland, Michigan also. Tonight, I'll be uh, Jim's counterpart. I'll be uh, player two and popping up here and there. Thank you all. And tonight, we also have Jacob Kaufman, uh, who is working behind the scenes, making sure that everything uh, uh, runs smoothly and all our sounds are are taken care of. And finally, our narrator for tonight is actually one of our playwrights, Philip Kaplan. So now sit back and hopefully you have a drink and snacks in hand and enjoy the Cupcake Conspiracy. The Cupcake Conspiracy by C.J. Ehrlich and Philip J. Kaplan. Act one, scene one. Setting, the Empire State Building, evening. A solitary figure in a trench coat, holding a bright red pocketbook, looks for something or someone. 
it is Natasha. She wears a striking green necklace. Max enters, jiggling the New York Times conspicuously. He's also a juggles a small floral arrangement. Max sees Natasha and walks past her, lifting the newspaper. Natasha looks at him in the eye, takes a cupcake out of her purse, and nibbles it. A red bag. Excuse me. Uh, your bag, it, it, it's red. Thank you for that perspective observation. Uh, I'm early. <laughs> I'm Bob. Uh, a, a newspaper? Bob, uh, newspaper? Oh, Bob! Uh, uh, Carol. If that would please you. <clears throat> oh, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I've never, I mean, uh, these are for you. Max, was, Max throws flowers at her. It was supposed to be Daisy. Uh, I'm, I'm always so... Oh. I like the showgirls from Las Vegas. Uh, uh, X. Uh, uh, th th that's great. <laughs> I know I'm early. I, I, I'm nervous. I, and I'm early. Oh, an hour early. <laughs> but, but so are you. <laughs> what are the odds? Uh, too compulsively punctual. Uh, uh, the computer knows all, huh? Bob? I'm talking too much. You play the part to perfection. Gosh, I wish my wife could hear you. I, I, I mean, my, uh, my ex. Um, I, I wasn't going to mention her uh, two minutes in, and I just blurt it out. Blurty blurt blurt. Uh, my wife always says I can't. <gasps> my ex. My ex, ex, ex. Uh, I should leave now. Uh, you, you want me to leave? Your woman is no concern to me. Uh, that's very enlightened. <laughs> You have told her nothing? Are you kidding me? Uh, Mum's the word. <laughs> Good. No civilians. No civilian casualties. <laughs> yeah. I get what you mean. I think so. Uh, uh, so, uh, tonight? Yes. Business. I, I, I hope you're not too... I'm not too much of a disappointment. Uh, the website said that Photos are superficial, so... Based upon your response and Interpol profile, you will not disappoint. I, I have a sense of humor, too. I, I checked that box, right? Your sense of humor is legendary, Bob. So, uh, I made reservations at this Italian restaurant on the Upper West Side. It's small and dark, and we can see it from here, uh, well, on a clear night. We have an appointment, Bob. Yeah. Well, let me be upfront about one thing. My real name... Bob X! Should not we not use our real names? No. No names. <laughs> no, not expecting that, but okay. No names. No expectations, no rules. I'm Bob X. Uh, call me Bob. And I am Carol. Wow, Carol, I'm feeling great, Carol. I'm really pumped. I think we will have success tonight. I am sure of it. Oh. Well, you know we will, <laughs> because I'm a bad boy. <laughs> You're the baddest, Bob. Uh, we're both hungry, uh, right? Uh, in case Italian is too boring, I also made three exotic reservations, uh, uh, Persian, Afghan, Pakistan. Uh, name your poison. Bob, we will handle this ourselves without any help from the Persians or the Afghans. And I can never remember whose side the Pakistan is on. Just you and me tonight, Bob. Yes. <laughs> but first, uh, how about a snack? I, I know of this place that sells really good cupcakes. I mean, they're, they're really good. They're expensive, but... Uh... They said you were cruel. They were right. You have the facade of a fool, yet you strike like a cobra. Huh? Other people's cupcakes. It's like you are driving a glass stick through my heart. <laughs> oh, uh, I have to 
same reaction when someone says, hi, Jack. Oh, oh, oh Jinkers, maybe I should go. I, I mean, I'm saying all the wrong things, and you seem like a really nice girl, and, but it's been a, a, a while, and I don't even know a rubber suit. And I mean that in a good way, even though I said it in a bad way. Don't leave, Bob. I need you. Wow. I can't remember when anyone last said that they needed me. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, tonight, call me Mr. Risk. Okay, Mr. Bob Risk. I'm imagining what's the worst that could happen. Do you wish me to describe this terrible event? Uh, no. <laughs> let's get out of here. Uh, let's get to it. Uh, oh, this is so much fun, it should be illegal. Natasha drop kicks her cupcake and exit with Max as Alvin jogs on. He is carrying the workers weekly and a droopy daisy. He looks around and buries his face in the newspaper. Susie enters, carrying a red handbag. She looks around and sees Alvin raising the handbag. Hey, hey. Hey. You're Bob, right? Newspaper? I'm Carol. Uh, I'm Bob. You're Carol. Red handbag? Sure is. Well. Well. What do you think about the showgirls of Las Vegas? No, 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 no. You're supposed to open with, uh, with, with skydiving, spearfishing, and spontaneity. And then I do monster movies, the Ming Dynasty, and spontaneity. What about my Daisy? Very, very nice Daisy, but... This is too much spontaneity. What? I, I'm so confused. I, I should calm down. Compliment my dress and we can start over. Uh, look, uh, Miss Carol, uh, sorry, I'm not who you think I am. Oh, oh, you just happen to be on the Empire State Building Thursday night carrying a newspaper and your name just happens to be Bob Gnowski. I meant to ask, is the end silent? Very silent. All the letters are silent. Ooh, how very Francais. <laughs> we got our wires crossed is all. Could I have th that- No way, you don't get rid of me that easy. But, but you're not- Yeah, and maybe woman. you're not either. Myrtle Martin says a single woman has to throw away 10 men to find one keeper. So let's get it over with. What'll it be? Greek, Chinese? No, 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 you're Italian all the way. Every Friday night, chicken parm special, right? A salad with dressing on the side and a glass of frickin' house red. And a frickin' cappuccino if you're feeling frickin' lucky. You seem like a sweet, kind girl, Carol. A credit to your Girl Scout troop. But I'm here for someone else. Oh, do I look like an idiot? Idiot? No. Dangerous, perhaps. Rabidly angry, for sure. Did plenty in this evening, even if you haven't. That that suit of yours, did you buy it at Value Mart? Y you know what? Keep the flower. Hey, yeah, go. Find your other date, so-called. Ah, she is not so-called. She's about 5'9", blonde hair, wears a green necklace, and she may have been talking about cupcakes. <laughs> oh, sure. I take it you didn't see her. Alvin notices Natasha's cupcake at Susie's feet. Susie kicks it away. <laughs> Alvin offers his handkerchief. <laughs> Leave me alone. Take it. So, where is she, Bob? Oh, I... You know, I have to work with guys like you. You like to torture people, don't you? You get a kick out of stringing them along with your wonderful promises, which turn out to be lies. Oh, do not call me a liar. Oh, you don't have to explain. I'm out of here. You can eat my frickin' dust. Wait, do you have a car? 
Do I? First and last time I drive to Midtown, no left turn, no right turn, no U-turn. I mean, what the frap? That's right, Bob. I swear like a frickin' fish when I get excited. Or angry. Or hungry. <laughs> Keep it. Souvenir of the shortest and worst date ever. My loss, cause you're as cute as a bed bug when you're not yelling. You know, you're the first guy I actually made time to meet. I should be home studying business Chinese. Well, don't go. If you leave now, you'll always wonder why what might have been our future we left in the past. It'll keep you up nights, knowing you can never know what almost was. It's not easy to put yourself out there, you know. I am very upset. And very pretty. I can't imagine what you'd look like with a smile. I don't think my heart could stand it. But I'm already up in the clouds, so I guess that's all right. You're moving in the right direction. Why, if anybody took a look at you and walked away, they'd have to be blind or married. And even, th and even then they'd want to take a peek. Bob? Yes? That was a beautiful speech. You bring that out in me. It would have sounded better when we first met. Now I can't believe a word. Look, Miss Carroll, you came on pretty strong when we first met. Maybe it was you and maybe it was me, but if it's over before it started, all I can say is, sorry it didn't work out. Well, my evening's already ruined. Yeah, mine's pretty well shot to pieces. Where do you want to go? Everywhere, Carol. Let's make this a night we won't forget. Blackout. Act one, scene two. Time, half an hour later. At Rise, Natasha and Max prowl in a dark basement storeroom. What next? I'm ready for anything. Natasha sweeps the flashlight over the shelves. Max fidgets, then discovers a light switch and turns it on. No! Uh, no? It is easier to find the sorbet polycytinia number seven in the dark. Max flips off the lights. Well, when you say blind date, you mean it. Sorbet polycytinia number seven. Uh, is that uh, another name for Viagra? Because uh, I, I don't need it. Uh, who's up for some more breaking and entering? Breaking and entering is over. It is? Was breaking and entering when you picked the lock? That wasn't just your, uh, kinky ritual, us climbing through the window instead of using your key? My key is useless. The manager has blocked the entrance door with costumes for the new dancers. I don't understand any of that, uh, but it works for me. Bob, Sorbet polycytemia number seven. Uh, is that some sort of, uh, kinky massage oil, poly... Sorbic polycytinia number seven. I'm not plutonium, but it's the best I could aspire to on my budget. Oh, you're very funny. No one has ever said this to me before. Oh, uh, uh here we go. This is sulfonate bohemia number six. Oh, whoa, whoa. Well. That's what I call kinky. Uh, funny how there's no exits in this room. Max flips the lights off. Your insights are keen, Bob. But will you help me with the lights off? Help? <laughs> Put you in the mood, you woman of mystery, you? <laughs> I'm in the mood to find the Sorbic Polycytinia number seven. I will search to the left. You search to the right. Other left, Bob. Right, uh, left. Uh, just wondering, where does the knife come into it? Knives are not in your arsenal. I, I could learn <laughs> with the right teacher. Who taught you to break into buildings? 
Oh, well, now there's a funny story. Uh, not a plutique, plutique, plutonium funny, but me funny. I will continue to search while you tell me this funny story. Uh, it's all on account of the Beatles. The Beatles? Beetles, uh, I collect them. Order a uh, uh, cowley up terra, insects with the elet, el etra. Uh, I have been known to pose them uh, as the beetles with little guitars made out of twigs and spider webs and Ringo's drum set made out of acorns. Oh, I have photos. Uh, 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 you're not interested. <laughs> I'm interested in many things. For example, Hurry. When I was nine, I was on the trail of, the, of a tortoise beetle. You are more fascinating at every moment, Mr. Bob. The little fellow looked just like Jimi Hendrix, flew into a basement just like this, and I couldn't follow him. That's when I decided that if I was going to be serious about collecting, I'd better teach myself how to pick locks. <laughs> Funny thing is, I, I never unlocked anything to get a beetle. You hunt bigger game now. No, I, uh, oh, <laughs> do I ever. <laughs> I cannot believe how many different toxins there are. <laughs> uh, what is that stuff you're looking for? Sorbic polystitinia number seven. It was developed as a sugar substitute by the Norwegians. An artificial sweetener. But when combined with food coloring, there is a reaction. That stuff is poison? Exactly. Sorbic polycythemia number seven combined with red dye causes, well, dye. And blue dye hallucinations and chicken claws. And let us say it is a Swiss army knife of sugar substitutes. Carol, we broke into a storeroom uh, there's a secret formula, and you're armed. I is there something you're not telling me? Of course, many things. I'm not an idiot. This is a industrial sabotage, isn't it? It is brilliant the way your mind works, Bob. Yes, industrial espionage. For the die, eat cupcakes plan. Diet cupcakes? Oh, you'll make a fortune. Uh, and your work is done. <laughs> this is ketchup. Oh. It is hopeless. I will never be able to exact my full throated screaming in the streets revenge. Uh, my wife, my ex-wife, <laughs> says you've got to be ruthless in business, uh, but I say make love, not war. Very funny, Bob. Do you know what it's like to see your father gunned down in front of you when you're nine years old? I'd say no. That is why you exact revenge. Uh, that's terrible. Why was he gunned down? He was robbing a bank. Uh, back up a second. Is this far enough? Oh, uh, <laughs> your father was killed robbing a bank? No. Where did you get that idea? Oh, I, I thought that... He was shot and wounded while robbing a bank. What kind of man takes a nine-year-old girl to a bank robbery? Your family did not do outings. We were very close. Oh, Bob, I am spilling information as if you were waterboarding me. Uh, spill away, Carol. Stop! It is not your turn to say too much. Have you ever had the silent treatment? Not by such a name. It's when you, when someone you love puts you in a room you can't escape from, for example, my bedroom, every night, and fixes you with this searing, heart-freezing glare until you read their mind to figure out the latest thing that you've done wrong. <laughs> See, if she speaks, she loses, and, and all this to crush any happiness you might have left in you. Brilliant, but nothing scares you, Bob. You are so masterful. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I've been excused, uh, accused of being timid and rabidly. You, 
Oh, rabbit. Yes, me. Someone calls you rabbit and you let them live. Well, it was Mrs. Mrs. Rabbit and... Uh, of course. You can be so close to someone you can no longer see them. Uh, yes. So close that all you can think about is putting plastique in their omelet. Yes. But you do not. Why? Because I was weak. Weak! No! You loved them once, uh, but they were, but they began to fill every waking hour with their laser-eyed accusations. Yes, Bob, yes! You know what? There are a couple of tiny things bothering me about this entire date, uh, but I'm going to ignore those nagging feelings uh, and I'm in, that I'm in way over my head. And, and, and that's what a bold, decisive person would do, right? You must own your own fear. Accept the unknown. And destroy it. We could eat it after. And, and, and maybe uh, fool around. I must be at factory by midnight. Oh, is that what they call it these days? But first... Uh, let's find your sugar substitute. Sorbic polycytinia? Uh, number seven! <laughs> uh, uh, you hit the jackpot! There, there's a whole box of them! But I need at least two grapes. The universe mocks me. Oh, uh, uh, we can work this out. How? There are only two places in the city which carry enough sorbic polycytinia number seven, and the other one is in the Bronx. Uh, well, what are you doing tomorrow night? You would do that? Uh, for you, yes. For me, yes? We will cancel the trucks tomorrow night. Uh, we should go eat. <laughs> eat? Uh, do you mind if I tell you, you're very competent, Carol. Call me Natasha. Blackout. Act one, scene three, setting. The sidewalk outside Benny's strip a go go At rise, a large bouncer ejects a patron from inside the strip club, then stands behind a velvet rope barrier outside a club. From inside flashes of dance music and lights from a disco ball. Alvin enters, trailed by Susie, and stops in front of the disco. Okay, and this is so not a restaurant. Alvin takes out a device, presses a few buttons, it pings. What is with you, Bob? You think a date is to wander around Hell's Kitchen all night? I don't want a pet rat or a tattoo or a drink in a bar that is covered in sweat. Wasn't Madame Galena a character? Ugh. She threw us out, ejected by a psychophrenologist. Psychic. It's an adventure, monkey face. Oh, do not patronize me because I'm a woman. And in case you haven't noticed, these are date shoes, not walking shoes. My feet are killing me. Go rest your adorable feet in the car. Here's some, uh, here's some breath mints to tide you over. I'll relax in my car in a dark, in a dark alley. Gas it up, get the oil checked, I'll go halvesies. Meet me on the curb in 15. Please put that away. If I wanted to spend the night with a workaholic, I would have stayed married. <sighs> this is a live one. I know it. Yeah, it has potential. If you knock it down, turn it into a luxury condo, flip it to the Chinese, and move it to a better neighborhood. Uh, can I ask you a question about someone who may or may not work here? Hey, we don't talk about our girls. She might wear a green necklace and... Uh, you want to meet one? Buy a ticket. But... Beat but... it. Go. Okay, let me rewind, remind you what a date is. First, you take the girl to a trendy restaurant with tiny portions and strange piles on huge plates. Bob, I want food. I'm so hungry, I can't think straight. Take me to a donut shop and I'll swear I'll think it's the rainbow room. After this, I promise. You can drive us to the romantic spot of your dreams. We'll have clams on the whole shell. Uh, oysters on the half shell? Uh, this is twice as much shell. And all the grog you can drink. Oh, please tell me you've heard of champagne. 
champagne, grog, you name it. We'll, uh, we'll tangle the night away. <laughs> and uh, I'll peer deep into your sapphire eyes, hypnotized by your dulcet tones as you whine about your ex-husband. Oh, that's it. Did you care about one thing I said or were you just toying with me on that dating site? Oh, I sincerely read every word you sent me. Like, I was so impressed with the sacrifices you make for your patience. Patience? Patience. I said, your great patience. Like all teachers, like a therapist, bak bakers, the potters, wine <clears throat> merchants, horse whisperers. You um, are okay, just how many girls are you dating, Bob? Look in my eyes, Carol. You are the only girl I'm currently with. And I'm not just saying that because you have a car and a smile that makes me want to write a poem by William Shakespeare. Oh, you're probably not used to compliments. No, not at all. My husband, my ex, used to look right through me. He did. You should have beaten him with his white cane. Yeah, I'm down here on the totem pole, but oh, he has stress. This tiny incident, one jumbo jet. He says left, not right. It lands in Havana and not San Juan. Everything is so monumental. What? How did I not hear about this? Oh, it was no big deal. But now he spends all his time worrying about what could happen in the air. Afraid to do anything on the ground, you know? I tell him to relax, damn it. He says I'm controlling. You speak your mind. You're sassy. It's sexy. And harsh. Mm, harsh like a smack on the butt with a sexy towel. Yes. I'm a woman first, and a junior hedge fund analyst second. Junior fund analyst, yes. Swish. <laughs> Swish? Swish the creep hadn't quit when you needed him. But more for me. Oh, that's it. He's a quitter. Oh, Bob. If you could only understand how much I need a forceful, assertive, sensual man who likes skydiving in my life right now. My gosh, Carol. I could almost imagine considering reordering my priorities for you. But first, I've got to find... Oh, yeah. This is all about that woman who doesn't exist. Well, aloha. Ameli Kalagimaka. I'm gone. Okay, see, I'm not passive aggressive. I'm not passive aggressive one this time. Wait, Carol. I'm about to tell you something that may shock you because you're stunning and I have an urge to confide in you. And I'm also thinking this date could end in fireworks, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Gunshots, maybe. What if I told you I'm a very famous TV producer? I can't tell dates what I really do. Chicks flip for TV biz whiz. I hate TV. I don't have TV. Well, I do, but I can't figure out how to turn it on. So, have you worked on anything big? You've uh, heard of Justin Timberlake? Hannah Montana? The Teletubbies? Perhaps. Uh, we won't mention them. <laughs> Such a shallow medium. <laughs> oh, especially what I do. The dregs. Reality TV. Biker dudes out dancing housewives, bikini designers eating scorpions. Oh. It's probably a little exciting. Mm, wrong. It's work, work, work. And it's cutthroat. We got this new show, So You Think You Can Hide and Seek. Every week we'll hide a different celebrity in a national monument, a national landmark. Right now, Marie Osmond's holed up in a guano-infested cave in Carlsbad Caverns, living on MREs. So you're, you're tracking Marie Osmond? <laughs> I'm trying to find her non-celebrity seeker. So sue me. Business and pleasure. Got to keep the payments on my mansion in Haribo. Uh, Malibu? Malibu to you too, sugar. But first, I gotta... Get this thing. My friend won't drop names, but he's a big TV producer. J.J. <laughs> Abrahams, A.A. Ron Sorkin, would that be name dropping? The guy with the thing who did the sneaker commercial, 
Here, um, my card. Mondo Tiagawa. It's Teagues. Mondo Teagues. You've seen my latest movie of the week. It's about a handsome undercover agent who hunts down a sexy assassin and wins the lottery. My favorite show is When Murderers Leave Clues. It's taught me a great deal about not leaving clues. Boffo. Is there a girl dances here? Around five foot nine. Blonde What's hair. her specialty? Snakes, firewalking, Sarah Palin. She has a slight Silesian accent and an obsession with cupcakes that borders on homicidal. Green eyes. Yes. And Natasha. <laughs> She's our money launderer. Natasha. Money laundering? It's a cash business. Oh, don't you have machines for that? Nasty. I guess she's also your accountant. Yeah. Accounting. Brilliant. A skill you can master in prison. You have to speak up. I can't hear you. She's no terrorist. You make her sound like some kind of terrorist. Would I have a terrorist do my taxes? She left it too. <sighs> Damn. Anyway, I can get an address, a phone number. Sure. How about Natasha's? <laughs> Not a chance. But look at you, boy chick. We always need the beefy silent types in the TV business I'm in. My skills include judo, Krav Maga, and tap dancing. Could you uh, maybe break into her desk for me? Everybody does it in Hollywood. Bring out anything you find. I forget which shell company she's doing taxes for. The bouncer exits into the club. I may have to give you another chance, Mondo. You mean uh, you'll still have dinner with me after all I've put you through? Dinner? Or should we skip to the tango and champagne? Sorry, dude. Desk is clean. Calendar for tomorrow just says bakery, whatever that means. Oh, and I uh, found this. So, how's about something up tempo? And a one, and a two, and a uh, chronic. You'll hear from us. Peace, bro. Sweetie, you just saved my job. How about my love life? The night is young, Mondo. Hey, what kind of name is Mondo? It's an old Indian word that means embarrassing name. Well, I want to know what makes Mondo tick and hear all about Mondo's shallow celebrity friends. Oh, you will, baby. I don't need a psychic to see oysters in our future. Blackout. Act one, scene four. Setting, a hot dog stand in the park. A hot dog cart stands alone in the park with a sign that reads 100% organic tofu hot dogs. A hot dog vendor mans the cart. He wears a scarf across his face and a black ski hat. We can only see his eyes. Max and Natasha enter. A moment, Bob. I get a kick out of the showgirls in Las Vegas. And the fountains of Bellagio entice me. Uh, Natasha, you must be starved. Uh, can I buy you dinner? Oh, maybe not. Don't be alarmed by the name, Bob. It is merely to scare the customers away. Show him. The hot dog vendor pulls a string and the organic tofu sign is replaced with a new sign. Death to America hot dogs and knishes. <laughs> you think it was a terrorist hot dog stand? The hot dog vendor shrugs. He hands Natasha and Max two hot dogs. Max pulls out his wallet. Natasha stops him. Put away your money. 
Well, maybe the rules have changed, but I still pay on the first date. I will consider it a grievous insult if you purchase me. Hey, I ain't got all night, bud. Let the dame pay. Natasha holds an interesting weapon to Max's throat. <laughs> you win. I will buy the cooked sausages. The most unselfish gift is your own life. You win. What was that all about? Did someone give you an exploding birthday present when you were little? Actually, yes. If you relax, you might feel better. Max fake stretches so he can drape his arm around Natasha's shoulder. She swats her way absentmindedly with her weapon as, as a fly. Feeling better makes me very angry. Right. What about, what, uh, what's in the package? Bulletproof hair nuts. You are one serious baker. Papa wanted the boy to carry out the family business. I was interested, very interested. But Papa would have none of it. As a girl, I could cook and clean and that was it. Ouch. I may be old fashioned, but he sounds very controlling. I beat eggs like no one. I crimped and creamed and peeled and boiled. I could do anything with a pan and an oven. But I hated every second because I could not help Papa. One day, Papa was badly wounded and the business was mine. Yet all I knew how to do was to bake cupcakes. Oh, cupcakes? Oh, so that's why you're weird about it. It's embarrassing, humiliating. It fills me with raging chocolate hate. I'm sure your father robbed banks uh, because he loved you. Really? You did not have to live with them after. Daughter, change my bandages. Get me the remote. Daughter, I'm in much pain. Daughter, run to the post office to see if I'm on wanted posters. Also, he would not let me bring boys home. <laughs> Dad, uh, they can be uh, so overprotective. <laughs> but now I'm as ready for battle as any man. As you, Bob X. Boy, am I ready. <laughs> Max tries to hold her, but as the hot dog vendor starts to exit, something drops with a loud crash. Down! Get down! You, you could just say no! It was a pin pull from the grenade. I'm always prepared for disaster. It wouldn't be that bad. Plan for failure. Expect the verse. Plan even more. Oh, plan for success. Uh, take your polysorbentini. Uh, your crates are half full. If we do not find the rest, I may have to resort to arsenic. Well, uh, don't even joke about killing yourself. Why should I kill myself when there's so many that will do the job for me? Well, uh, stop thinking the world's against you. Not the world. Only certain rogue states and one republic. Cheer up. Picture your goal. Do you have a goal? Of course, Bob. I have an objective. Yes, here it comes. Flying in on runway 217, direct from Phoenix. Success! And you're the only passenger. Do you see it? I can see it, Bob. And it's getting bigger. What do you see? I see young people. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, more. Young people eating beautiful cupcakes. And getting closer. They are rich. The cupcakes? The people. Beautiful, rich people eating my beautiful cupcakes. You're doing it now. Hit the target. Ah, they're screaming. How? Screams? Screams of panic. Natasha takes out cupcake wrappers and throws them into the air. <laughs> What happened? The cupcakes, the beautiful cupcakes, they're exploding. Oh no. In the faces of the rich people, there is blood and wailing and gnashing teeth. That man had a cherry splat in the middle of his forehead and mixed with the blood, sprinkles, silver, green, chocolate, gold, everywhere. Oh, okay, stop and remain in your seats. It's if a cloud is lifted. 
this thing with your father, I I'm guessing you haven't ever talked it out with him, have you? You take all the dark, deep thoughts and fly. It is like a beautiful sunrise. Over a disturbing new day. Thank you, Bob. Natasha gives Max a kiss. <laughs> You're welcome, but... Uh, tomorrow night. Tomorrow. You will be in my dreams, Bob. You and the cupcakes. Natasha runs off. Cupcakes? <laughs> That's one wild dream. Blackout. Act one, scene five. The storeroom in the dark basement. At rise, it's pitch dark. You can do it. Come on, Carol. It'll be fun. Oh, fun for you, maybe. Uh, just relax. Take a breath. Uh, try a different position. I don't care if you buy me dinner. This feels wrong. Let me lift your legs. Trust me, I'm from Hollywood. All right. No, wait. I, I, I need the lights on. Oh, bad idea. Ugh, fine. Wait a minute. Alvin turns on a flashlight, finds the light switch, flips the switch. We see Susie's shapely backside and her legs hanging down the wall. She's backed halfway through the window, attempting to descend into the basement storeroom. Ready? Are the lights on? Ready. Let go. Alvin grasps her legs and Susie wiggles her weight onto him. Susie drops from the wall. Alvin loses his balance, crashes to the floor with Susie on top. What kind of famous producer has to break into a basement? What break in? The window was already jimmied. So I misplaced my keys and my cameraman. If we see any security guards, let me do the talking while you hide like that clever Natasha. Shouldn't you pay your golfer or gaffer or best boy for help? Uh, they're exhausted. It's two in the morning on the coast. No, it's, it's two in the morning here. No, well, it's, it's later than you think. My crew is casting a new series, uh, Preschool's Got Talent. How would you like to hear Itsy Bitsy Spider 600 times a day, <laughs> and <laughs> then get naggy calls from basements? <sighs> Mm -hmm. mm. Ah, they dropped something or broke a pinata. Uh, there's a man with a limp who was blonde and 10 feet tall. No, that can't be right. Two blondes, five feet each. Damn, I should have read the whole handbook. Are, are you a producer or CSI? A pedal, a flower pedal. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Bob, Bob, Mondo. <laughs> I'd love to tell you how much fun I'm having, but I'm not. I'm starving. I'm freezing. My feet are on fire. So, you know, call me. <laughs> um, look, um, could you show me the stairs or give me a boost? Send my love to Natasha and, and Marie Osmond. <laughs> oh, you can't leave. You know too much. W what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I always wanted to say that to a girl in a dark basement. <laughs> um, I'm not calling the police. I'm just uh, checking the weather and uh, help. No, no, look, we just need to find something, maybe poison. Then I swear, Carol, we're out of here and it's tango time. Uh, Mondo, this is such an adventure, but I, I just remembered we're turning three nursing homes into shopping malls in the morning, <laughs> and, and I forgot to feed my cat. Oh, poor Marshmallow. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm a great judge of character, and I sense you're feeling a little anxious right now. Uh, not at all, Mondo, no. Let me just show you my mace. Oh, damn, this is my Gucci. This is not my Gucci, this is my Poochie. Uh, oh, yeah? <laughs> Check this out. Oh, don't stab me. Why do I get that on dates? Where's my maze? Don't stab me. You have me all wrong. Watch. No, pen. It's a laser pen. Ow! <laughs> Laser-tastic. <sighs> Want to see something else? My watch. It translates pashto into Portuguese. Go on, say something. <clears throat> Does your undershirt by any chance turn into a straight jacket? 
no, but oh, this is great. Touch my belt. Go on, touch my belt. Okay, Mondo, I am not some Hollywood bimbo, even if I am trapped in the, in the basement with a maniac. <laughs> but good thing you didn't touch my belt. Why is that? This buckle discharges 600 kilojoules of lethal voltage. It's a stun belt. Mondo? <laughs> yes? How do you get dressed in the morning? Very carefully. Buffo. Okay, now I must run. I can run pretty fast in these heels, and I can scream. Ah! 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 Stay back, I have maple syrup. Wait, 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 wait. When I tell you who I really am. What is this, are you for real? This time I am for really for real, Carol, yes. I am a special agent in the secret department of the Bureau of Homeland Security. My real name is Zim Zimble Effrington Jr. Call me Z. Can I lay my cards on the table? Please do, Z. I'm so confused. I've made you party to a case that involves not only homeland security in our homeland, but homeland security abroad. Okay, make that super confused. For Carol, six months ago, I cyber infiltrated a secret, highly encrypted enemy combatant website the terrorist version of monster.com. Someone calling herself Natasha was seeking an expert in plant toxicology with a minor in breaking and entering. I sent my resume, phony of course, but she bit. I am this close to penetrating her cell, which I, we, believe is about to execute a plot so heinous it could alter the face of American freedom. What kind of plot? It has something to do with cupcakes. Cupcakes? really evil cupcakes. Of course. When my target didn't show up on the Empire State Building, I broke one agency rule. I pressed you into the service of a top-level government investigation, but told you it was a blind date. What? What can I say? I was captivated by your beauty. And I like to multitask. And then I... Yes. I... Now I need to deputize both you and your car. Natasha. Yes. Look, Z, these boxes, they've been moved. Time to buy more Sorbic Polycetinia number seven. What is it? I don't know, Carol, but I'm going straight to my lab. Oh, can I come to your lab now that I'm deputized? If only you had the clearance. But could you give me a ride to the subway? Oh, are you kidding, Z? Just ask. I'll sacrifice anything to help our country. <laughs> Look at you, Carol. All this and hedge funds, too. You're a true patriot, aren't you? <laughs> Be careful. If you say yes, you'll have one ecstatic security agent on your hands. Then yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Blackout. Do you, do you see an exit? Act one, scene six. Setting a living room one hour later. At rise, it's pitch dark. Someone moves <clears throat> quietly. Ow! Ow, jeez! Two claps, lights on. We see a living room with a prominent couch made up as a bed. The poofy duvet is covering a big lump the size of a body. You leave your junk lying all over the house. Wake up. Susie prods the lump and then whacks it with a large book. No response. She pulls off the duvet and sees that it's covering Marshmallow, a large, goofy, stuffed animal. Oh, no way. You are not in the bedroom. I'm in the bedroom. Rattling sounds from the front door. The terrorists. They followed me. I'll call Z. No, 911. No, Homeland Security. Who the hell has a number for Homeland Security? Psst, wake up. Get out. Save yourself. Susie dives behind the couch. She claps twice. Lights off. 
Stop! Jeez! Out, out, you sneaky, law-breaking, freedom-stealing... Two claps, lights on. Max is sprawled over the book. Susie stands on the couch, the book raised over her head. Susie, please stop! Oh, Max, thank God it's you. Susie throws herself into Max's arms. He's not used to this. She pulls away. Why are you... Uh, who do you think I was? And, and what do you do with my tighter beetle, tighter, tiger beetles of Alberta? What? Why are you sneaking in? I didn't want to wake you at four in the morning. Why are you dressed up? Stop changing the subject. Where were you? Let me guess. Chasing a wimpier wimpiest all over town. Hey, didn't you just break Carlo's no insults rule? Oh, you just love those rules, don't you? All 50 first dates of them. Yeah. No. What? Did you lock the door? You wanted the separation. You wanted us to see a professional. We both said we, were, we would follow Carlo's stupid rules. I, I like the one about no hit, hitting. Oh, for God's sake, stop calling him Carlo. He's not our friend. He's our separation counselor. Where have you been? Out. Where out? Uh, lots of places out. Uh, Dr. Mondero Mondero uh, said that I should find the real Max behind all my defenses and emotional lost luggage. Remember that session you said I was so dull I don't reflect light? Is that lipstick on your shirt? Oh, ketchup. She doesn't wear lipstick. Oh. Uh, I, 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 I mean... Oh, I get it. I get it. Out with a woman, out. Let me guess. A dangerous brunette with green eyes and, uh, oh. <laughs> like you break that rule. Maybe I did, Suze. Maybe I met a dark, exotic, quietly seating, very confused woman who needs me. Oh, was her name Sleeping Beauty? She'd be just right for you. Oh, listen, Cupcake, there are people who think I'm a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, and those people are insects. Oh, would you stop? God, if I'd known that you were going to quit your job and spend every night of our marriage putting tiny wings on dead beetles, posing them posing maggots as roadies, and deciding which shriveled up earthworm looks more like Keith Richards. I can't go back until I'm ready. Oh, please. You had one bad day. They turned left, not right. Nobody but you ever used the word hijacking. Take the exam and go back to work. I'm not ready. If the government can bury it, so can you. Could you try, Susie? Just try to put yourself in someone else's shoes? Oh, 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 I wear all the shoes in this family. I have to work all day and mingle all night to carry us both. One wrong move and I'm out. I never have any fun. Well, barely any. <laughs> I wish I'd known that disappearing night after night to get your MBA would lead you to disappearing night after night. For work. And I invited you to those parties and until you nearly got me fired with your negativity and cluelessness. Everything's so trendy. How am I supposed to know what's art? So I had to use the bathroom. You ruined an $80,000 piece. Or I made it more valuable. That exhibit was genius, but you... You hadn't answered. Were you out on a date? If you can't trust the person you're separated from... Were you? I, I was... Volunteering at the um, soup kitchen. You were helping other people. I help people all the time, Max. Sure, all the rich people eating their rich cupcakes. What did you say? Why do you need $600 heels to serve soup? The pot is very tall. What kind of soup cake? Kitchen is open until four in the morning. New York is a fun city. The homeless never sleep. <laughs> Insulted. You can't even come up with a more believable lie. I was serving chicken soup and whatever poor people eat. 
day old caviar and, and, and surplus cans and stuff. It's, it's so satisfying to be part of a, part of a plot to feed the homeless. A what? A plan. Hey, you know, I love my country. I, I just love it. I, I'd give my freedom to protect it, Max. Well, how could you? We are still married in the eyes of God, New York State, and my mother. Who was he? Sure. Maybe I met a TV producer. He wants me on his new show about women who get second chances. Because they throw away their first chance? I did not throw you away. You're the one who- Fine. Oh, don't you lecture me. Fine. You want a lecture? I do not. I can give you a lecture. Uh, no, thanks. Oh, you don't know me. I used to. And I used to know you, Max, before you forgot how to live. I'm sh I sure can't figure out how to live with the new you. Have you even tried to keep up? It's time to deal with these. Are you insane? We can't sign divorce papers until we graduate separation training. Okay, Carlo thinks we're almost ready. And if we bring these in by Tuesday, he throws in a free notary. Remember our honeymoon in Bali? Well, I do. We danced on the beach. Uh, that bonfire. You in your white gown like a goddess. Orange sprays of sparks flying all around you. So romantic. It's a paradise. We were ready for anything. And then the rains set in. Uh, the monsoons. Flooding. The cholera. Skydiving canceled, snorkeling canceled, massage tent. Yeah, commandeered as a field hospital. But all we needed was each other. Hmm, just love. And the paramedics. What a week. Every day I said to myself, I'm the luckiest man in the world. You only get one honeymoon. A per marriage. <laughs> I can't wait till my next honeymoon. It's just a divorce away. That's the spirit. You said divorce without crying. Oh, you said divorce. Why don't we just initial a few of these um, to warm up? Would you tell me if you were seeing someone? Would you tell me if you were seeing someone? I'm a gentleman. I don't discuss beautiful women with my wife. Sure, I'll sign them. Finally. Tomorrow, I'm, I'm tired. Max, you wanna sleep in the bedroom tonight to uh, celebrate? What? <laughs> Isn't that uh, Ma Dr. Mon Mondriani's uh, number one don't for a successful separation? <laughs> Why do we pay this man? Uh, do you need help with that? Max tries to help her with her zipper. It gets jammed. Susie tries to take over. They both struggle with the zipper. Max rips it out by mistake. <clears throat> Max? Uh, Suze? Yeah. Can I kiss you goodnight? Max, I, if we, I mean, rule number six. What's the worst that could happen? They creep dangerously close to one another. Their lips are about to touch when Susie's phone buzzes. Oh, hold that thought. Susie so puts her phone. Susie puts marshmallow between them and they both hug him. Max tries to get around the toy to Susie's lips. Max? Yes? Um, I'd better go brush my teeth. Uh, what, uh, and then we can uh, uh, celebrate? Susie takes a long look. From Max to her phone, phone wins. Uh, it's very late, Max. I, I, I know. In the morning, papers, okay? But. Good night, Max. But, and good night, you marvelous, mysterious marshmallow. Susie stuffs marshmallow into Max's arms and exits.
Max turns away and punches the stuffed animal in the face. Crap! End of act one. Act two, scene one. Setting, four different locations. At Rise, Max, Natasha, Alvin, and Susie are in different quadrants of the stage. Max wears a headset and has a cell phone. Susie has a cell phone. Alvin is logged onto his computer. Natasha is typing on her computer and has a phone. Bob, I look forward to seeing you tonight. All day I'm thinking about what you have taught me about sharing your sausage. Bob, eh? You are one lucky bastard. So Bob's me, and my name is Bob. I love sharing, LOL. <laughs> Meet you again tonight in the basement warehouse, said. No, I told you. Robbery in the Bronx at seven. Bronx, Bronx, where? Give me a clue, woman. Then to the factory. Send. Oh, I'm cooked. What factory? The cupcake factory. Cupcakes, yes. But where, where? At 346A Bowery. Don't be late. Shipment must go out at midnight. Send. Three, four, six, eight, bar. <laughs> uh, if I'm late, start the robbery without me. Send. Bob, it will be wonderful to... No, no, no. When I am with you, it is as if I've been injected with a Silesian neurotoxin, causing me to lose my inhibitions. No, no. It will. No. Oh, Bob. What could I express the waves of elation rushing through me? Perhaps page 356 of... Bakunin's Arcanist Manifesto, or that wonderful moment in the little vision that could when the toy train brings the shrapnel to the village and no, 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 no. Seven. Yes, this tells him everything. Seven. <laughs> I am jealous of every moment you spend without me in our quest to reasonably negotiate. Ha ha, just kidding. In our quest to randomly dominate and destroy. Said. As Susie dials, Alvin's phone rings. Zim Efferton here. I can't wait for tonight to help you help our country. Uh, about that. This is now officially dangerous. You stay home. Tend to your hedges. Max dials his phone. Well, don't tell me danger. Don't tell me risk. I am more than just a bunch of trendy art shows I don't understand. I... H hold on. Uh, uh, Suze? Uh, sorry, I, I can't make Carla tonight. I, I, I have to cancel. Cancel? What the hell, Max? Why don't we just cancel the separation? Natasha phones Max. Uh, uh, One more thing. Can you break into a truck? Maybe, but I, I can't drive a stick shift. My henchman will drive. So, are we ready to rumble? Uh, yes, uh, see you at seven. You just canceled. What are you gonna wear? <laughs> then. You can't uncancel while you had me on hold. I made plans with my girlfriends. Black goes with any caper, <laughs> said. I, I was not uncanceling. Good. What? Uh, who's this? Who's asking? 
Susie, who is that? Carol? Who's Susie? Who's Carol? Uh, hang up. Bad connection. Carol, I think your phone is tapped. Who'd want to tap your phone? <laughs> You'd be surprised. <sighs> Tonight! Screaming face! <laughs> Blackout. Act two, scene two. Setting, inside the Unabaker Cupcake Factory, the frosting room, dark. There is a sign on the wall reading, Unabaker Healthy and Safe Cupcake Corporation, baking since 1968, Invasion of Praha. Also absolutely, truly supporting baseballs, television, and American freedom-loving Americans. We hear the sounds of screaming, punching, a struggle, gunshots. Lights up to reveal Ignatz, the guard, lies on the ground near the entrance. Vince, the henchman, hovers nearby. Max and Natasha enter, Max carrying a bottle of wine with a bow on it. Natasha pocketing a gun. Max takes in the scene with alarm. And all this frosting room where we will be using all natural organic flavorings and colors. <laughs> you shot him, my God, you shot him. Plus the poison we stole, which is also organic. There's a a dead man on the floor, and you shot? Ignatz gets up. Right, it? Yeah, five out of 10. Sloppy, not the killing blow. Oh, it's him, look. Oh, would you autograph this, <laughs> please? <laughs> to, to Ignatz Jr. With okay. senseless rage, <laughs> my son. <laughs> oh. Release the dog. He just started law school. Patrol the perimeter. Fetch the pallets of poison. Vince okay. and Ignatz exit. Max tries to follow them out the door. Not you, Bob. <laughs> oh, oh, why would I leave <laughs> when there are shooting and dogs and perimeters and poisons? <laughs> Say, before you mix up a batch of your diet cupcakes, could, we'll say we catch the midnight double feature at the movie theater down the block. <laughs> Vince and Ignatz roll in pallets piled high with cartons of chemicals. At last, my collection is complete. Oh, Bob, after years of pain and suffering, mostly other people's, our plan is finally ready. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> our plan. Now I see, terrorism doesn't have to be lonely, isolated as a profession as it was in my father's day. Terrorism? Uh, by which you mean industrial sabotage, espionage. It is okay in here, Bob, to brag. Call it terrorism. These guys are, are, are terrorists. Hey, we don't. Look, agent of anarchy is option. Yes, our union will not accept chaos combat or fifth element. When you label us terrorists, you rob us our individuality. I have hobbies, you know. I, I like to see movies about people in terror. I have a stolen Rottweiler named Hootsie, who does cute little tricks. Yeah. His owner died screaming in terror and... Yeah, you call it Put these on. <laughs> These are bulletproof by hairnets of Hamas. <laughs> Everything should be bulletproof. <laughs> There's a clue I missed, all right? Bob, if this evening goes as I have planned, I will take place with you as one of the world's greatest terrorists. And who knows, perhaps a great deal more. <laughs> As we buy little hideouts by the Caspian Sea <laughs> from the Cossacks and the KBG. <laughs> Thanks for a lovely evening. <sighs> it will be sad and furious if you leave. Leave? I wouldn't miss this if my life depended on it. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> Oh, maybe the great capitalist Satan brought us together, uh, but maybe it was fate. Reach for the stars and you may torch the moon. And now the sky's the limit. 
tell me everything about you. You, wonderful you, in the bizarre, twisted runway that landed you here. And, and be sure to point out all the exits in case of fire or explosion. <laughs> I would love to tell you, Bob, because once you know my secrets, we can never be apart. Oh my God. I, I mean, goody. As a bonus, you will be my first boyfriend. How you say? Not horribly mutilated in front of my eyes. Oh, what a great story to tell more kids. <laughs> Mommy held daddy at gunpoint and daddy wet himself. <laughs> Do go on. One night. Papa was shooting while robbing the Third National Bank of Silesia. And, and you nursed him like a sensitive, caring daughter. Like a slave all oh, the morning. You have put on too much plastic in the explosive. Plastic does not grow on trees so many times. A plastic! Oh, but Papa healed and he learned. And he robbed the Second National Bank of Silesia. Papa used spoils of robbery to send 10 recruits of terrorists to training summer camp in the Persian War province. Only three survived the color wars. Those fanatics helped us, Papa, construct the bakery. Um, um, uh, you've lost me. Why a bakery? Exactly. Who would suspect a bakery? We could beat and chop in the kitchen, and Papa would beat and chop in the basement. Uh, sorry I asked. <laughs> I began to bake decadent confections, rivaling in decadent patisseries of Europe. Pravda Rast Restaurant Critic awarded us four sledgehammers. My cupcakes were a sensation. Long line forms around the village square, but we did not see the greatest enemy of all. Your dentist? The spy satellite of the Valumart Corporation. Oh, uh, uh, Valumart. Uh, oh, I love Valumart. Uh, they're uh, heartlessly low prices. Uh, I, I'm always trying to get my, my ex to shop there. Valumart, the dream-strangling capitalist monster. They opened a mega cupcakery next to ours. They discounted every item on the menu by three groschen, added the word value, and destroyed us. Then, out of spite, opened Worldwide Cupcake Company, known as Worldwide Cupcakes. Papa died a broken man, greeting customers in the Value Mart Weight Loss Clinic. So, I traveled to America. Over the last five years, I had under-assumed identities become number one frosting supplier to worldwide cupcakes. And now you make the best darn icing ever, everywhere. So um, well, Value Marta will see your value and you will affect change from within. This is a very special batch of icing. On Friday, worldwide cupcakes will spread it to 10 million worldwide cupcakes in pink. It'll make tasty flowers and sugary balloons in blue. When you stick a candle in it, well, boom, Bob, boom! Oh, good girl, good girl, exploding cupcakes to get your revenge. You're so random and crazy, who would love you? Max turns to exit, trips over Alvin. Alvin is crawling on his hands and knees as camouflage gear. They have a quick stylized fight. Alvin jumps Max and they wrestle. Max keeps trying to leave, but Alvin won't let him. Max gets the advantage. Who are you, intruder? Well, Bob's your uncle. I'm the chimney sweep. Come to sweep your chimney and sweep them my dead. Cheerio. <laughs> he is trying to steal my secret plan. Disarm him. Max takes an egg beater, a blowgun, and a feather duster off Alvin's back. The lady sweepy gear from a bloody. You're no chimney sweep. You're right. I'm from animal control. There's a rabbit raccoon in this building. Quick, everybody, panic. Even I find that unconvincing. Do you know 
What do we do with lying spies? Uh, become their friends, uh, so they speak openly and honestly. Interrogate them harshly, without mercy. Daddy always said. Oh, <laughs> oh. What would Daddy say now? <laughs> But what I am, what am I doing, Bob? I am so eager to see you work. Work? Oh, I'll, uh, uh, boy, will I work on him all right. <coughs> uh, uh, sorry, I, I can't. Sinuses, I, I, I need water. You, okay, <coughs> refreshments. Vince bows, hurries out. Ignatz enters, bows. Yeah, I have um, released the dogs and secured the perimeter. <laughs> Vince runs back and shaken with a torn sleeve. He holds out a dog's water bowl and a couple of dog biscuits. You call this refreshments? Vince offers Max the water. Natasha points to the exit. Ignatz takes the dog food. Vince exits again reluctantly. Search him, Bob. All you'll get is my name, rank, and serial number. And, and my wallet. Uh, this is King Bazzini, a lion tamer? Uh, no, wait. He, he's a TV producer. Mondo T. Uh, G's. It's pronounced Teagues. Uh, wait, he's a wonton roller at Sun Yao's? Admiral Nelson? Or, or, or should I say uh, Agnes Moorhead? <laughs> About that. <laughs> uh, Bob X the terrorist. Uh, we do windows or entire buildings, reasonable rates for free radicals? What are you doing with Bob the terrorist business card? Are you... Natasha the terrorist? How dare you use my alias? You hardly know me. I'd love to change that. You're as beautiful as you are deadly. Do not try to flatter me. Who are you, interloper? You know who I am. I am Bob. Bob X. You are deranged. Tell him, Bob. You can't beat Bob in front of Bob. Where I come from, the penalty for Bob impersonations is that Bob, me, kills you, false Bob, in cold blood. Do you like the showgirls of Las Vegas? You stood me up, Natasha. How could you know about that? Because I am Bob. The Bob. Who is this imposter? Oh... Uh, listen to this liar. Do not call me a liar. I, I made up the killing false Bob rule, by the way. Ask this liar how he got out of the standoff at the Prague Zoo. Bob, how did you get out of the Prague Zoo? Uh, I am not on trial here. And if I was, I would get very angry. I'd take a large pin and stick it through your heart. Then I post paste a label under you that said, not Bob, in Latin. Max gives Alvin a timid little shove. Tie him up. Vince and Ignatz tie Alvin's hands behind his back. Tie us both up, so who gets out first? Uh, nice try, not Bob. Allow me, miserable vermin. You pretender, my recipe must be cooked by midnight, but you will be burning like the Pokemon village unless you talk now. <laughs> really? Wow. I never saw a man <laughs> break down so quickly, except Anton. A Anton? Anton. <laughs> My first and only love. Now, Anton, so handsome, so strong. He stole my first kiss, but it was not to be. Oh, did you break his heart? My father broke his legs. 
a story for another time. Oh. <laughs> Make him stop. <laughs> Come on, stop. You strong, sensitive maniac, you. I never thought it would be like this. <laughs> I mean, I usually, I torture them. <laughs> Pull yourself together, man. That is a first time for everything. You think I have ever shipped explosive icing before? I don't even know how to label the boxes. Yes, uh, you two discuss first times why I'll secure more perimeter. <laughs> Max takes the opportunity to retreat to a spot where he can sneak a phone call. Vince returns with a large soda and bucket of popcorn from the nearby movie theater. Natasha is gagging Alvin. Max dials his phone. <laughs> phone rings behind the sacks of flour. Ignatz and Natasha start looking around for the source of the ringing. Susie, pick up, pick up. Susie, I'm in terrible danger. My life's hanging by a thread. The country's in peril. The fate of the free world is in peril. Call me back. This is Max. Uh, uh, bye. Ignatz and Natasha discover Susie behind the sacks of flour. She's in chic camouflage gear, still wearing her high heels dating shoes. Would somebody secure the perimeter? Ignatz covers Susie's mouth with tape, ties her hands behind her back, and puts a baker's hat over her head as a blindfold. Another one. She is American, or imported. Those shoes? Imported. My ex had shoes like this. They cost a mint. These are decadent shoes of oppression. How many enemy combats would could we blow up for the price of these shoes? Hmm. I wonder if they come in red. Huh. Oh. Women spend a fortune so they can all have the same shoes no one else has. Bob, we have a busy evening planned. Interrogate her quickly so we can see if they are well, you march spies are here to steal my recipe. <laughs> I can't rough up a woman. I mean, I'm more of a get in, get out, blow up large landscapes sort of kind of a guy. Go on, Bob. Make her talk, Bob. Make her talk. Max considers. He makes a series of threatening, balletic moves towards Susie. He waves a knife around while swishing his trips like a Chippendale sing dance with Natasha, who doesn't miss a move. Yes, Bob. Yes! Rock me back, Daddy! Max approaches Susie, takes a quick inventory of her ears, her hips, the back of her neck. He pats her on the butt. Could it be? Max pops her gag with a knife. You bastard! Keep your hands off me! Hmm. Where have I heard that before? Oh. Let's uh, take a break from all this interrogating, my little snapping turtle. Uh, uh, go outside and be, breathe the romantic night uh, air. We'll, we'll gaze at the moon. I'll, I'll tie you to a tree. Bob, I am eager to discuss Western delusions of love lash romance slash the moon with you as we dispose of their bodies romantically. But my cupcake clock is ticking now. I know. Uh, let me tie her to a tree. No, you can't scare me. You're the ones who should be scared. We've got a SWAT team up on the roof and, and one in the bushes and, and a whole bunch more SWATters in the movie theater down the block. Uh-oh, uh -oh, you heard him. Let's get out of here. Bluffing. Uh, you're a nice person, right? Uh, you probably have a husband who loves you to the max, even though sometimes you wouldn't know him if he was sitting right in front of you, you'll fly home to him and act like you saw nothing, right? How do you know I'm married? Uh, we know what we know, and the rest you will tell us. I, hey, what about fake Bob there? Where'd you find this boy toy? He's twice the terrorist you are. 
You haven't. He hasn't. Has he? Because I'll kill him. Did you think of your husband for one second? God, you sound just like him. <laughs> Only more evil and a lot sexier. S sexier? Then who? Then my husband, Max. A lot sexier, you say? Yes. And a lot more commanding. You bet I am. And unpredictable. It's kind of a turn on. <laughs> you wouldn't kick this psycho out of bed, would you? Oh, yeah. And you haven't seen me, my wild dogs, an unsecured perimeter. Where are you going with this? Uh, this is Bob being unpredictable. Uh, so, why did you marry this boring, non sexy person? Well, he wasn't that way when we started. He had some tough breaks, and I, you really can't blame him for. Well, don't, me make, <laughs> don't make excuses for this jellyfish. Uh, letting a treasure like you slip out of his fingers because he forgot how to have fun. It's his own damn fault. His own stupid, clumsy, blind, stupid. True, but. Hey, but it takes two to tango. Bob, let's speed this up. You torture the boyfriend, I torture her, we switch, we can go warm up the poison. Oh, forget them. Uh, do they look like they know anything valuable? Yes, but as Papa would say, just shoot him. No, you only get one chance to make a last impression. Perhaps you have been blind to more than you know. Max pulls off Susie's baker hat so she can take him in. Oh, 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 it's, it's you? Yes, it's me, Bob the terrorist. And if you're smart, you'll admit that you have no idea uh, what you are doing here with us. Uh, two strangers that you have never seen before. You. Oh, gag's back on everyone. So Bob. Is she a government spy or a well you much spy? Z, your Homeland Security, arrest them. And you, you, you wait till we get home. Home? Homeland? Bob, what is going on here? Why are you calling him Bob? I think you know in your heart who is and who isn't Bob a terrorist? Um, Max kisses Natasha you, warmly. You heartless, lying bastard. I knew it. Bob the terrorist is a heartless bastard. But what does she mean, home? Homeland? Max gags Susie. Um, uh, uh, hey, let's start a family tradition. Uh, we'll kill them together at midnight. Wonderful! Tie them up in the room of pain. The, the room of pain? And now we check the whole box machine. Yes, my evil darling? Max embraces Natasha and Hara as the henchmen take Alvin and Susie away. Blackout. Act two, scene three. Inside the Unibaker Cupcake Factory in the room of pain. Lights up on Susie and Alvin gag, tied to two chairs, back to back. They are trying to wriggle free. Susie finally gets her gag off. My husband has gone over to the dark side. How could I have thought he was dull? And where the hell is he stashing his second salary? You know that guy? You picked up on that, huh? Is it serious? Oh, your keen powers of observation are stupefying. Well, because uh, after this blows over, I, I want a second date. Dinner, dancing, fried clams, the whole kahuna, baby. Who cares if the Bureau frowns on fraternizing with civilians you drag unwittingly into your cases? <laughs> I went from boring to terrorist mastermind to a psycho secret agent who cries like a girl. I'm going to die because I can't settle. Don't say I cry like a girl. Well, I call him like I see him. My foster mother said I cried like a girl. 
<laughs> and so did my foster father. <laughs> Come to think of it, so did my foster sister. And, oh, God, it's true. <laughs> You're going to die because of me. Oh, God. I'm going to die because of me. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm, I, I'm pushing. I, I, I always push too much. <laughs> uh, look what I did to Max. <laughs> Bob. To us. And Okay. Okay. No time for soul searching. Let's all focus and do a little spitballing and get to yes. Okay. First, uh, the, the plus and minus columns. Um, we're bound, trapped in the torture room, and about to get killed. Minus. How do we hedge that risk? Okay. Sure, I can't think. Z, Bob, M Mondo, Marco, Polo, for God's sakes, what is your name? It's Alvin. Alvin. Alvin? Alvin? Just call me Worthless Alvin. No, I want positive talk, Alvin. A, a great name for a great man, like Alvin Einstein and... Thomas Alvin Edison, uh, invent something, Alvin. Yes, you have an electric belt. Sure, I can electrocute anyone willing to buckle my belt. Fabulous, what's plan B? <sighs> Want some candy? That always helps me think. Hey, hey uh, you good with marbles? No. Well, well, I am. When they come back, I'll shoot a bunch of jawbreakers at them. They'll trip and fall. I'll grab the key with my mouth. I'll untie us, get his knife, uh, but we'll pretend we're still tied up to keep the element a surprise. Fantastic. What's plan C? You're right. It's crap. Oh, it's a crap plan. We're going to get killed, tortured, and then killed, and then tortured again. And for what? Because I wanted to advance? Me. The most mediocre mediocrity that ever set foot on the hallowed ground of the Homeland Security building. Agent Alvin, this is not fitting behavior for a G-man. Oh, don't you understand? I'm a nothing. I sell lifesavers in the lobby of the Homeland Oh, no, no, I'm not Security. listening. La, 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 And la, greeting la, cards, la. too. Oh, I wanted to be an agent. One of the big boys. I was, I was going to show everyone. Alvin Flegelberger is more than just a kid who gets picked last in the St. Jude's Orphanage dodgeball team. Now I'd give up anything to wake up in that lobby. Oh, but we're going to wake up dead. <laughs> you know what's ironic? You're going to die because of my incompetence. Well, maybe that's not ironic at all. Oh, stop it. Today is today. Now is now. We only have one chance to get out of this, and it's going to take everything we got. Which is bupkis. Oh, stop. You are not mediocre mediocrity. No, I'm beneath mediocrity. I'm a subocrity. Oh, you are a titan at one thing, Alvin. What's that? You are the biggest, baddest liar I've ever met. Don't say that. You're just saying that. Absolutely not. You had me going for two days. And even now, you in a newsstand. <laughs> oh, Danius. A cover, cover, cover. A triple agent. The point is, you're amazing. That's your plan C. Instead of lying, can you call it ultra persuasion? C? You make lying sound sexy. You can do this. I'm pasting your last words over there, cutie pie. Mm. Say, uh, how'd you like to turn your life around with one meaningful gesture? Let us go. Uh, we'll never tell anyone your name. We don't know your name. <laughs> it's Charles Manson. You had to tell us. It's just my combat name, sweetie. My real name is... <laughs> no, you don't. Chuck it is. Chuck, since we're all going to die. <laughs> You're the one that's going to die, King Bazzini. You and this... Uh, oh, my real name's Mondo. Untie us and uh, we can all get better acquainted. <laughs> I'm spoken for, Mondo. It's a committed partnership. Come here. I want to show you something exciting. <laughs> What's that, Claire? 
I'm crazier than I look. My belt is wired with a gigabyte of TNT. When Natasha comes back, I'm going to blow us all sky high. What explosives? Oh, yeah. They're micro explosives, but they pack a punch. <laughs> I've heard that one before. Come closer. Closer. Here, see? Touch my belt. Just touch it. Professional curiosity. What do you got there, kitten? Elvin, you did it! It worked! It worked! Wow! You're the best! <laughs> We're still trapped. Oh, far. Alvin struggles Houdini like to escape his bonds. He frees his legs, lifts his knees, shimmies, and gets out. It's fantastic. Then uh, somehow he touches his belt and. Oh my God. He sells lifesavers in the Homeland Security lobby. No, no, I'm not listening. La 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 la. Max enters rapidly behind Susie's back. Oh, Max, why didn't I cherish you when I had the chance? Why couldn't I see? You were doing the best you could. And even if you do fly coach in the bedroom, I, I, could, have, I could have tried to upgrade you to first class. You appreciate he had a choice in carriers. Max! <laughs> I suppose you're going to blame me for this, too. Well, I can't wait to see what Dr. Mondriani says about you torturing me. And, and who's Miss Look, I am beautiful psychotic terrorist. Uh, she and I, it's, it's just business. Uh, and you, you're CIA? Yes, Max. After my 60-hour work week, I'm in the CIA, the FBI, and the Justice League. Who's your man of a thousand ID cards? Who are you? Good Max or Evil Bob? You wanted me to get out of the house, try new things. Oh yes, join a book club, not a sleeper cell. I mean, hostage taking, torture, kissing terrorists, untie me. Oh, so, so she can kill us and you can ship us all to uh, Gitmo? Uh, let me think. Uh, you, un Bob. <clears throat> Carol, who am I this time? Carol. Susie. Susie? A, a beetle has only one Latin name. Uh, what's yours? I'm with the government. My division is considered the hallmark of Homeland Security. We show up when you care enough to send the very best. You have backup. Look, I discovered this plot in my spare time, so... We... Yes? This is Commando. This is rogue, baby. No backup. We're entirely on our own. Okay, this is now officially the worst date anyone has ever had. Oh, I have a plan. To poison us and dump our bodies in the alley? No, Susie, I love you. Even we're on different sides of this thing. Well, maybe I could learn to be more evil. If we come out of this alive, can we call off the separation? I can't. We, we paid Carlo two months in advance. Natasha enters armed with a shiny new course crossbow. She surveys the scene with a long look at Vince. This is looking much my sixth grade class photo. Natasha revised Vince. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Ignatz enters. Oh, is it your birthday, my striking cobra? What a song of happy death day to you. <laughs> you know, you're beautiful with a weapon in my hand. The killing is even sweeter when shared with someone you love. Counting to three. Oh my God, no, Max! What, Max? Why did she call you this? Oh, she said, relax, relax. 
Then shoot! Shoot, Bob! Why will you not shoot? Uh, uh, Natasha, uh, uh, meet my ex-wife. Uh, you're not upset, are you? Bob, I'm so relieved. I thought you were plotting against me. Oh, this is the petty tyrant, her heart hard as nails, the controlling witch, blind to the real Bob. No, oh, she's not all bad. I, I, I mean, she's pretty bad. I, I mean... Uh... Bob, but I thought, I thought you and I... Uh, of course, <laughs> you and I. It's just... Okay, Natasha, you deserve total honesty. She and I, we're still married. You're married to that... Married? Well, separated. It's as good as a divorce, as divorced. You see why I can't shoot her? Too many lawyers already involved. But do you love her? Of course not. She's yesterday's fizzle bomb. I don't... Love her? Natasha, stop, wait. Take him, take him. Uh, but my sweetheart, Natasha, Natasha the terrorist. Never call me that again in what is left of your short life. Vince grabs Max and carries him off. Natasha and Ignatz resecure Alvin and Susie. Ignatz enter, exits. Please stop, I, 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 I can make you rich. I can double Ooh. your portfolio. Well, past performance is no guarantee of uh, rich, I tell you. Filthy, stinking rich. Never! We, we could automate your entire factory. Think of it. Robots everywhere. You, you'd increase henchman productivity 90%. Stop begging, spy. You have seen too much. Natasha slaps Susie in the face. Uh, I, I swear I'll say nothing. And, and he's an idiot. I will kill all three of you when the icing reaches the soft fondant state. <laughs> sure, but could we use our words? Because of you, I'm having to kill the first man who've ever made me feel like a woman. Not the daughter of a terrorist or the sister of a terrorist. Oh, it's hard being a woman in a man's profession. Always having to prove yourself. There are no support groups in terrorism, are there? I've tried to organize, but no one survived the first meeting. Oh, but uh, why kill him? Quiet! You have already killed this man with your sniping and complaining. Natasha puts the knife to Susie's throat. Please vent more at me. <laughs> what is a husband? Someone you are so close to, all you see are the bloodshot veins and the whites of his eyes. You hear his snoring, but not the joy as he helps you pick out the perfect poison. Do you ever ask about his daily body count? M Max, Bob, has a body count? When he breaks into a building, he is silent as smoke and graceful as commando. Max locks himself out of our apartment. How typical! You critique, you judge, you belittle, you torture him. The drip, drip, drip of your petty demands. Oh, you want to talk about torture? Smash the dishes for me, Bob. Set fire to the laundry, Bob. Mix my Molotov cocktail, Bob. Hey, I mix half the Molotov cocktails. My husband. There are bonds stronger than marriage, spy. You have taken, taken from this man, this exciting, bold, passionate man whose life I would share if only if he were alive to share it. Well, I'm upset too. I didn't know my husband was a famous terrorist. I didn't know he had a secret girlfriend who's younger and far more scary than me. Thank you. How long have you been seeing him? Two days. You met him two days ago? No, I met him at six o'clock last night, and I knew- Oh, this is ridiculous. Max does not make an impression. You may be smart, educated woman, but you know nothing of love. 
Bob Max is the only man for me. Bob Max love you, therefore killing Bob Max is the only way to fill this aching Bob Max shaped hole in my heart. <laughs> Natasha claps her hands. Ignaz and Vince wheel in an enormous cupcake with a cherry about a foot in diameter on top. Here's the one I made earlier. Ignaz lifts the cherry, revealing Max's head. He is baked into the middle of the cupcake. How can you bake someone you love into a giant chocolate cupcake? What do you know? It is raspberry with a chewy nougat center. Could I get the recipe? Yes, but then I would have to kill you. Hmm, okay. Wait, wait, what if I divorce him? Then all you have to do is release us and register for wedding gifts. Such divorce would be meaningless. You two are still in love. Love? If, if I loved him, would I torture and abuse him every night? Would I drag him to parties to mingle with bloodthirsty strangers? Would I leverage our marriage into a lavish lifestyle we could barely afford? Oh, damn. That was a lot faster than five years of therapy. Max, I'm sorry. Natasha connects a bunch of wires to the cupcake and connects them to a timer. You will never know love again, only revenge, hate, and maybe a long prison term. Please, Natasha, I'm sure there's another way. There is either the show bomb or the hot foot. No second chances, no compromises. Natasha cuts Susie's bonds. Oh, thank you. Susie tries to hug Natasha. Natasha shoves her away and tosses her a knife. Enough talk. We will fight to the death, Carol. Quickly, I have much to blow up this evening. Oh, bring it on, sister. We do this every day on the trading floor. They fight. Susie is losing. Susie runs to the cupcake and removes Max Gag. Stop. Let's get Bob's lame excuse for what he did to both of us. Excuse yourself. No. Please, Max, you gotta. I'm through playing. Release me. Now. You are in no position to... Question, do I seem nervous to you? Do, Answer. Do, do, do you need us anymore? Yes. Ignaz and Vince bow, consider, and run out. Question, do I seem nervous to you? Answer. I'll answer that. I am perfectly calm, but getting very angry. Yes. Yes. The anger of Bob is legendary, but the revenge of Natasha is permanent. All you know about revenge comes from cookbooks. I will destroy you! Oh, I thought you were more clever, Natasha the terrorist. A giant exploding cupcake, I think, is pretty clever. It's easy to blow things up. Th that's what your father was good at. You want to make him proud. But you, you, you create, you don't destroy. Yes, I will create revenge. And I will have revenge on you, and lying Bob, and on her, and on him, and on well you march. Revenge on capitalism itself, and revenge on that Cossacks who put mayo on my sandwich when I clearly said mustard. Revenge torture? They don't last. Uh, like a horrible date at the pretentious art show with your first cousin? Max, don't. Bob, don't! Be quiet, both of you! Take marriage. You hit a bump in the road, you say left instead of right. Some days it's terrible and it's your fault, you make her crazy. Then she has a bad day and, I don't know, starts criticizing you, getting in your head, chirping, chipping away. Your hobbies are boring. Why can't you be different? Oh, uh, no! Not that different. I said I was sorry. And pretty soon you, you're two bark beetles attacking a forest, uh, stripping away tree after tree until there's no bark. Okay, does it have to end in beetles? The easy thing is to get revenge, to blow up your marriage. It's a lot harder to bake something together, to stick to your partner like 
icing on a cupcake turn your enemy back into your friend. It, it's worth it. Lies! This is not a marriage. Marriage is... You think the same thoughts. You shoot the same things. And when you die, your children revenge your death. It's beautiful. I know you, Natasha. This is about your father. No! This is about Wow You Mart and you, Bob. I wish we had never met. You promised we would lie and cheat and steal together as one for the rest of our lives. Whoa! Whoa! Uh, not exactly. But no. Lies, 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 and the wife. Do not call him a liar. Your father loved you, but he didn't know the real you. You don't want to destroy, you want to bake. Maybe so, but you die anyway. Don't you see? You can make a left turn here, a right? No, a left. Kill your engines, come to a steady cruising altitude, but watch it. Uh, belongings may have shifted. What are you saying? Come in for a safe landing and we can find happiness. Happiness without you? <laughs> we'll always have our moonlit night at the hot dog stand. <laughs> Wait, there's more than one way to clean a Kalashnikov. Susie slaps Alvin a few times to rouse him. <laughs> where am I? I mean, where am I? <clears throat> so many identities. You remind me of my father. You don't remind me of my mother. I like that in a woman. I'm sure a terrorist. That's a minus. And you are Homeland Security. Wow. I must kill two potential boyfriends in one weekend. And we girls wonder why the dating odds are so bad. Well, I don't mind being killed by such a gorgeous gal, but I sure wish I could taste that cupcake before I go. Natasha feeds Alvin a piece of the giant cupcake. Mmm. Boy, howdy. Mm, that is wicked. <laughs> Sinfully good. Mm. You are welcome. Mm. When you kill me and release your video, could you say Alvin Flegelberger from Homeland Security instead of uh, Alvin, the guy who delivered coffee to Homeland? This idiot didn't need an organization. He didn't think before he acted. You've got so much in common. Uh, oh, oh, and mention you're striking a blow against Value Mart. The guys in the office would think that's a big deal. <laughs> when I hang around waiting for the tip, they're always going on about antitrust, predatory, price fixing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yes. Well, you Mart emailed wine, wine, wine about price fixing. What do you mean emails? I have hacked into Well You Mart servers for years. They make me look like an amateur. You two could cripple Value Mart. How? Uh, blow up a store, they built five more. Expose them, you'll be a hero. Assuming you haven't poisoned every birthday party in the country. <sighs> Not even one. E everyone gets what they want. In my world, things either blow up or they don't blow up. Say yes. Yes, it'll be a perfect landing. So, what are you doing for dinner tomorrow? There's this restaurant the agents like, Greek, Syrian, Israeli fusion. First, you must show me this, expose them. Natasha hurls herself at Alvin and they commence kissing. <laughs> Do, do you hear something ticking? Yes. It's nothing. Just the timer. The what? For a cupcake bomb. Uh-oh. <gasps> I, I love you, Max. I love you? Blackout. Act two, scene four, setting. The top of the Empire State Building three days later. Susie's enters on crutches with a daisy.
No. No, it's, it's good he didn't come. Two little old ladies stare at her. Max enters. What the hell? Max, what are you doing here? Uh, same as you. Uh, I'm meeting someone. Someone I met online but missed our first date. Your computer, Bob? You would have never believed me unless I met you here. Wow. I go looking for a new life, and it turns out to be with my old husband. I love you, Susie. I love you, Max. But what are we going to do next time? Terrorism is easy, but marriage is complicated. I have a proposal. Natasha enters with Alvin, each carrying a cupcake with a lit candle. Alvin wears an eye patch. What are you doing? We don't blow up Empire State Building. Bad, bad. We are not here for the blowing up. We are here for the celebrationing. Celebrationing what? We took some samples to fancy restaurants, gourmet delis, and we got hundreds of orders. Natasha's cupcakes are buffo. We are also shacking up together. Is how you say? Yeah, she's a fast mover. <laughs> No, he's a fast mover. <laughs> <laughs> I must have chief operating officer who can handle pressure of business with exploding growth. I only trust Bob Max. Max? I quit my job. For real. I will triple his salary. How can you afford that? Oh, she makes the best cupcakes ever. <laughs> Bob Max must come to Vermont this weekend for organic dairy's meet and greet. Just down the road from the babbling brook, past the windmill, left at the field of contented cows. Yes, <laughs> left. I will also require Minister of Finance to raise capital. Oh, I couldn't leave my hedge funds. How much Did fun I? would it be, Suze? Cupcakes all day long. Wait, what, what kind of cupcakes? We are only baking explosions on Bastille Day, Veterans Day, and your independence from British aggressors holiday. They all toast with their cupcakes. <laughs> to my non-lethal baker. To second chances. The little old ladies run over and point their canes threateningly. Hands up! We are the Armenese Liberation Front! Take this building hostage! <laughs> I think this is a bad idea. I think this is a bad idea. No, no, Natasha, Max, Bob, stop! Susie, after all, all we've been through, you think I'm afraid of them? I have confidence. Cupcakes and a wife who loves me. You do not, you do not want to mess with me. Are you knowing who I am? Max ah! holds two cupcakes over his head and yells, he and Natasha rush the terrorists who drop their canes and run. <laughs> End of play. Yes, thank you very much. Great job, Cass, great job. And yes, you saw it here, a giant exploding cupcake here, Bay City Players Comedy Night. You won't see that anywhere else. Thank you very much. It was a great job, Cass. And uh, thank you, playwrights, C.J. Ehrlich and Philip Kaplan. That was a great play. We loved doing it. Um, we... Uh, if you want to watch this later on, uh, it'll be on our Facebook page. It'll also be on our YouTube channel. And uh, next Tuesday, we're going to present uh, another uh, original comedy. It's called Bitter Alice, and we think you'll like that as well. So um, thank you for watching. Have a good evening. See you next week. <laughs>